Congratulations on uh, finally getting here. Thank you. Um, obviously, you could have been, should have been, maybe here years ago, but now that you are here, do you feel like you can you can catch up and, and you know put yourself in the picture for 2026, even though you're getting started? You know, I've one guy that's been here for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the first time for me, and it's exciting. Um, you know, I think. Obviously, it wasn't possible before, you know, because of the citizenship um, that I've just recently gotten now, finally. And, um, you know, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's an exciting week to be here. I'm just trying to do my best this week and kind of see, you know, put my best foot forward and kind of get to know everybody. It, it gives them a chance to get to know me. And, um, you know, whatever comes in the future is, is you know, we'll, we'll, I'll deal with that then and uh, we'll worry about that later. But, um, again, I'm just, you know, excited to be here for this week. And, um, trying to trying to obviously show who I am um, on and off the field. Thank you. Thanks. David. A question for both of you guys. What's the attitude like um, in the group? You guys just got together here what, yesterday, I think, but what's overall the attitude and sort of vibe of the group so far? Yeah, I'll take it first. Um, yeah, m I mean, most of us haven't even been here for 24 hours, so just had a uh, welcome meeting with the, those of us that are here, our first training session, and uh, vibes are great. We have two great games ahead of us this week. Opportunities for for a lot of guys that haven't had caps yet. Uh, yep. This guy right here. Right. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, just it's it's going to be a fun week, a great week, and vibes are high. And I think everybody's just looking forward to the opportunity to to get some minutes and showcase what we can do in this camp. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it's been it's been uh, a lot of new faces, obviously, for a lot of us. Um, you know, me included, and um, we're excited to kind of build upon. You know what has happened in the World Cup and what is what has kind of uh, happened over the past four years, and um, you know I think everybody's eager to kind of uh, step in and um, yeah, you know make a name for themselves uh, as well to be considered for the future, and, and this is a great opportunity to do that. Greg, uh, for either of you, what what what's different about this camp when there's not a full-time head coach when when the, the system is still in a bit of flux? There's some transition going on. Is it different for you? Is it not different for you? It sounds like it's still a pretty good opportunity in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think it definitely is. I think it's it's still, um, you know, you're still coming in. You're representing the, the United States of America. You know, you, you're playing for your country. So, um, no matter what happens in the future, I think you you can show that you want to be a part of the group moving forward, whatever that will look like. Um, you know, but uh, again, it's it's a big opportunity for a lot of young guys and some more veteran guys. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, just uh, still a, a good good in that sense to to be here. Go ahead. Um, so for Paxton, Paxton, you've seen some of your other FC Dallas teammates over the years getting called into camp. Um, what's it like for you to be back in camp? And um, recently it's mainly been Paul and Jesus. What's it like for you to be in camp with them? Were they giving you advice or encouragement over the past year or so? And uh, same goes for Nico Estevez. Were you talking to him about what it would take to get back into camp, um, you know, the last year or so? Yeah, no, it's, it's good to be here. Um, I'm excited. I mean, it's been, I think, three years since my last camp, so... Uh, a lot of trial and error in, in, in between with injuries and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, obviously the support back home has been tremendous with, with Paul Jesus coming in a lot and obviously Nico as well just um, to me keep my head up. And uh, ultimately my focus was, was all back home and, and with the team and performing well. And at the end of the day, that's how you get here. And, um, yeah, but I'm happy to be with those guys, obviously. And um, they've – obviously had tremendous careers here with the national team and hopefully I can follow in their footsteps and they've given me great advice uh, both on and off the field just uh, as people as well. And just as a follow-up to that, do you physically, like where are you at right now? you feel ready to go? Firing oh, I feel teams? great, yeah. yeah. I mean, longest off season I've ever had, so <laughs> feel feel really good, uh, feel fit, uh, ready to go. Training back home was, was great and happy to be here and feel really good. Joseph. This is for both of you. How do you and your teammates deal with all of the um, uncertainty and just the craziness of the situation involving uh, um, the head coach? Do you talk about it? Uh, how do you, has Anthony Hudson talked to you about how to deal with it? What goes on with all with all of you regarding that? Yeah, I'll take that. I, I mean, for us, I mean, Specifically, Julie and I. This is the, my first time back in three years. Julian's first time ever. We've only been here for 24 hours, so it's difficult for me to even speak upon that, as as we're we're newer players here, and um, all of our focus is just on these two games. And uh, I think, like Julian mentioned earlier, um, 
that's going to take care of itself outside and ultimately it's out of our hands and there's nothing we can really say about it so yeah we're just really focused on you know showing well for ourselves for the for the for the country and you know for this uh kind of for this uh start of a new cycle you know to to kind of get on the field and get a, or get off to a good start against serbia and colombia and then um you know see what happens in the future rodrigo Hello guys, welcome. Uh, seeing the level that the United States showed at the World Cup and how difficult it is to win games and win the tournament, uh, where do you see uh, that generation in three and a half years that's going to be hosted here too? I think it's going to be, uh, you know, first of all, very exciting to have it here um, in the U.S., Canada and Mexico, obviously. And um, it's three and a half years away. You know, you can't forget that, but it's the start of something new. Um, you know, the, the new cycle, you know, again, it's, it's exciting. Um, what they've done in the past was, I think, uh, you know, tremendous. I, I've watched, obviously, um, the games from, from afar in that sense, and now to be part of that and to be able to represent that on the field as well is, is something very special, I think, and, and something that we can definitely build on, you know, and, and, and I think everybody that's, that's coming in as a player knows what the standard is, you know, and that's, you know, kind of being at the, you know, the very top, you know, and that's where where the, the U.S. belongs, and that's where we're trying to trying to get to, obviously, in three and a half years, and um, this is the start of it. Yeah, I think for me it was uh, just so fun to watch watch the guys in the World Cup and um, to compete the way they did, and in every game I felt like we had chances to win and we're, we're the better team and never got played off the field. Um, and ultimately that's that's something that I know even me being here three years ago, that was, that was the focus is to show what we can do to – to the world and, and make our impression and yeah just being a bystander like like all of you guys spectator watching the world cup i was so happy to see the boys perform the way they did and and work hard and, and play as a team and um being the second youngest team there it's it's a lot to build on and um a lot of guys are in the next three and a half years will will be growing into themselves and playing a lot of high level minutes and even even more guys coming up at a young age so uh, it's exciting for sure so uh, you think the perception changed of, because of what they saw at the World Cup, you know, how the world sees the soccer here in the United States? That's the goal. At the end of the day, we, we, we know within ourselves what, what we can do, but um, we want to show the world what, what U.S. soccer is and, and what, what it means to, to be an American playing soccer. And um, that was just one of the steps uh, in a long, long journey that we have and uh, definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, we'll take some questions from uh, our guests on Zoom, and we'll start with Stephen Goff from the Washington Post. We're playing. Congratulations. Thank you. Take us through, um, take us through the last uh, couple months. W was there indications when it became clear you were, you were going to get your citizenship? Did, did Greg tell you that you would be in the plans for the winter camp? Um, or was it, uh, you know, was it a surprise in the in the last few days or, or weeks? Um, I want to say it was more of a surprise. Um, it was obviously something I knew that it was a possibility. Now that you know, I got my citizenship in November, um, but uh, yeah, it was still obviously a lot happened, uh, especially after the World Cup, and um, that's why it was still a bit, you know, uncertainty about kind of what this camp will look like. Um, so I wasn't sure what it was what it was going to be, and then it was a you know a great surprise to find out that you know at first I was on the preliminary roster, and then you know Anthony Hudson called me and um, asked me if I wanted to come in, and you know it was it was a great uh, great conversation we had initially, and and you know it was a an exciting time now, an exciting couple of weeks, and you know I'm, I'm very very happy and, and excited for this opportunity to to represent the U.S. And to follow up, um, what, what uh, take us through. Uh, your American journey to, to get to this point. Um, obviously, you, you've had ties to the U.S. for many years, going back to youth and college. Um, to culminate in this call-up, um, what uh, do you see the big picture here and, and, and what you've gone through to get here? How long do we have? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a long journey and, and one that's pretty unusual, I think. Um, obviously, I came here for the first time as an exchange student, uh, went back to Germany for a couple of years to finish high school, and then ultimately decided to come to college um, and, and, and play at, at Providence College there for three and a half years, you know, had a great career in college and got the opportunity to play in MLS. And, uh, you know, I met my wife in college um, and uh, that kind of ultimately then led, led to a green card 
um, through the marriage, um, and three years later, here we are. Um, so it's been it's been definitely you know a long journey, a journey that I've enjoyed. Um, ever since I first stepped foot in the, into the U.S., uh, I've I, I fell in love with the country, and uh, you know that's why it's it's really exciting to be able to represent um, the U.S. on the field um, in those upcoming two games, and um, even you know my my family back home. They're obviously all German and all from Germany. They're very excited. I got phone calls. You know, um, I had a really really cool conversation with my grandpa, for example, who was a um, huge huge soccer fan, obviously, and a huge fan of mine, and. He, um, yeah, I could really hear how proud he was in his voice and, and how excited he was for me to have this opportunity um, that I've worked hard for, you know, and, and to kind of get rewarded that way is, is awesome and uh, I'm certainly going to enjoy it um, just as much as I'm going to try and obviously do, uh, do really well. Great. Thank you, Julian. Congratulations again. Thanks. Thanks, Stephen. Next would be Jonathan Tannewall from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Thanks, Michael, and thanks, guys, for the time today. Paxton, this one's for you, and I've, I've heard, <laughs> the nature of Zoom is I've heard most of the questions, tried to pick them up. If I repeat this a little bit, I'm sorry, but uh, you obviously know, you know Alejandro Zendejas. You've known him for a few years, going back to his time at Dallas. Yeah, uh, He's a guy who's been in the news plenty in terms of the dual national recruiting, as so many guys are, and here you are with some U.S. experience, and here he is in the camp. Do you... Uh, Maybe whisper in his ear a little bit and say, hey, would you like to be here for a while? <laughs> no, first of all, Zendejas is an incredible player. Um, when, I, when I first came to the club, he, he's a year older than me, but this guy was insane. So uh, I'm really happy to be able to see him again. Uh, he's not here yet. I think he comes after, after his game uh, with his club over the weekend. But uh, when he gets here, gets here, obviously I'll give him a big hug and – and uh, don't know what type of chats will go on, but uh, obviously as, as a friend of mine, just happy to see him in camp with us. And um, obviously outside of the friendship, he's a tremendous player and uh, we're really lucky to have him here and uh, showcase what he can do this week. Thanks, appreciate it. Yeah, and just a point of information on Zendejas, he'll arrive on the 22nd following Club America's match the night before, and he will return to his club following the match against Serbia. Uh, next will be Michael McCall. Uh, hi there, Julian. Just a, a question from Rainy Vancouver for you. Spoke to Vanny this week about your call-up, and he was absolutely delighted on a personal level and a professional level for you. But he also spoke about how this is really going to get you well prepared for the season to come and the big test that you've got, more so than just playing in, in pre-season friendlies. Can you talk a little bit about that and also... Was there a little bit of banter with yourself and Ranko on the flight over in the build-up to this game that's coming up? Um, yeah, of course there was some banter between Ranko and myself. Uh, we uh, we actually didn't fly over together, but as soon as kind of he knew that he was going, I knew that I was going. We kind of immediately started. He was like, "I'm not going to talk to you for the next week." Like you know, getting after it in training, but it's all fun and games, um, and, and I'm excited to play against him and see him. Um, but yeah, in terms of preparation for the season, of course, you know those those are, are two big games that you have, um, you know, now on the schedule for me. Um, you know, they're exciting. They're they're going to be going to be fun, and um, to play kind of you know at that level right away is certainly going to prepare me well. You know, I know we have a fast start to the season in Vancouver with the Champions League and everything, and um, I want to be you know ready to go right away when that rolls around. And these two games will definitely help with that. Last question goes to Charlie Bone. Hi, I hope uh, this is uh, where you guys can both uh, tackle this one. We hear in the past about, you know, sort of the preparation that happens before the camp, you know, sort of homework that players are given. I, I was just wondering if you guys, how much briefing have you gotten about what's going to happen in this camp, how you're perceived, do you know what positions or roles you'll be used in, just kind of the, 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 the backdrop or the prep for this? Yeah, I think mo most of those happen on, on an individual basis, I think just with with players and, and coaches um, reaching out what their role is going to be. Um, so yeah, obviously those conversations happen and guys come into camp um, knowing, knowing their role, knowing the expectations and obviously expecting to be, be fit. And, and uh, this is January camp, so uh, we're excited to, to use this also to gain fitness and, and get these games in. But mo most guys uh, speak with coaches and um, know the system and we're expected to come in and and 
be, be able to play with each other. And obviously, it's for a lot of us being their first time, it's it's a tough ask. But I know that the caliber of players that are here uh, can adapt to anything, and they're they're here for a reason. So uh, I'm expecting uh, good results. Yeah, I think it's. It's very clear that the style of play, right? I, I don't think it's going to change too much from, from what we've seen in the World Cup. So for us players coming in, obviously, we've all watched the games and we kind of have, um, you know, not just watch it, you know, with, you know, half an eye. I think we watched it pretty well. And um, so we all kind of know what roles, um, you know, we need to be in, in in terms of the different positions and stuff. And, and I think over the next few days, we'll, we'll have more in-depth conversations with the coaching staff and, um, you know, you'll We'll find out kind of how many minutes we'll play and you know all that type of stuff because it is still preseason. So, um, but again, in, in terms of overall, I think we know pretty well of what the style will look like, what the philosophy is, what the you know what the standard is, and and that won't change much from from the World Cup games that we've all watched. So, just, uh, just to dig a little bit more to that, um, Pax, or Paxson, do you think you'll be in the, that eight role? And then Julian, are you going to be attacking? Do you think, or or we get a look at fullback? Do you any, guys have any sense yet? Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll play, I think, fullback, um, to be honest. And, and then we'll see maybe a little bit more um, forward as well. But again, those, those detailed conversations will still happen over the next few days. And um, yeah. Yeah, same for me, besides outside back, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, um, most likely uh, one of the eights uh, somewhere in the midfield. And you know, like Echo and Julian, just uh, continue to grow. and. Um, learn and have those conversations uh, before the games and polish everything up. Our last, last question comes from Har. Hey, Har. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Julian, I was wondering how your role is going to be a little different with the U.S. compared to when you're in Vancouver. I know Coach Banny sometimes has you playing in multiple positions during a, a one single game. So how different is it going to be playing forward and playing maybe a bit of fullback? Maybe you're not as used to that here with the Whitecaps. Thank you. Um, I mean, it, you know, I, th I think throughout my whole career, I've played multiple positions in, in you know, multiple different systems. So it's nothing really going to be too new for me. Like I said earlier, I think the, you know, the, the style of play is very um, defined here. So it's going to be easy for me to slide into, um, you know, different positions on the field and, and whatever the, the coaches have in terms of a plan, I'll, I'll play that. And um, then when I get back to, you know, to Vancouver, I'll, I'll focus on what, what Vanny wants from me there. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm excited for these two games, you know, whatever role I'll play, if it's fullback, if it's, you know, right wing, if it's eight, whatever, um, it's, uh, it's going to be exciting and I'm excited to be representing the U.S. and then worry about Vancouver um, once I join them again in Palm Springs.